Brockton residents and business owners, this is Mayor Robert Sullivan. Believe it or not, this is our 41st episode of Our Brockton, and the title speaks for itself. It's Our Brockton, it's our home, it's our community. And as you know, over the, the last uh, 40 episodes, uh, it's really an honor and privilege to come to you and, uh, and have guests that educate and inform and, and excite. Uh, and so today I have just that person, uh, Richard Concio, who, uh, who has been hired uh, as a consultant for the city to help uh, educate and inform relative to equity and diversity and inclusion. And uh, it's, a, it's an ongoing process here in the city of Brockton, but he is a phenomenal person, an expert in the field, and he's been really doing yeoman's work for the city of Brockton. So Richard, thanks for being here. Thank you. How are you? Good, good, thank you. Do you mind just telling the audience a little bit about yourself? Sure, yeah. Um, you said my name is Richard Cancio. Um, he, him, he, him, his pronouns. Um, I've been doing diversity work for about a decade now. Um, started off with um, doing LGBT work in a, in a public health capacity in New York City, working with different hospitals and making sure that we were taking a look at how LGBT patients were experiencing the hospital system. Um, and that kind of bled into looking at intersectionalities, how that also plays a role in their experiences and looking at unconscious biases, microaggressions, all those little factors that all end up making a really large impact on patient experience and, and um, experiences overall. Um, so yeah, and then I was able to find this wonderful opportunity to do this work in a city capacity. Um, I've worked with the city of Cambridge in the past doing the same kind of work, uh, making sure that we're providing predictably positive experiences for city residents and employees alike, and making sure that we're approaching everything from a diverse and human-centered approach. Yeah, and I want to, first of all, thank you, um, not just as the mayor, but as a Brocktonian and as a dad of, yeah. of three kids. I mean, what you have done in this room, in the GI room, with training, first it was mandatory training for our department heads, right. and now we're bringing it to the next level of employees as well. And um, it, it's, it's, for me, it's um, refreshing the way that you present it. Um, you know, no, no question is a dumb question, yeah. nothing's off limits, but you allow people to within their, their, their comfort level. Mm -hmm. um, and then you also are generous enough to speak to people offline as well if yeah. they feel to do that. So in terms of your experiences, again, you're a New Yorker, right? We won't hold that against you here in the City of Champions, but, um, you know, you have such a wonderful wealth of knowledge, and, and so you were able to take it from the hospital setting and educating and informing there, coming in the municipal setting. Um, what has your experiences been working with the City of Brockton? Yeah, sure. So it's often, it's interesting because my background is medical and public health and all that, but I always say, like, if you take out the crux of this conversation, it's applicable in any scenario, right? Um, so being able to have that same identity and same reality of what this all looks like for the city of Brockton. Um, it's been really wonderful. I've had a great reception for the folks that I've been doing. We just finished cohorts two and three um, for the groups that we're training here for the Brockton, resi um, Brockton employees. Um, yeah, it's been really wonderful. I'm grateful to be able to have these conversations and, and like you said, create an environment where people feel comfortable mm -hmm. learning, making mistakes, understanding that mistakes happen and learning from those mistakes. Um, and I always mention, as you heard in your training that I did for you, is that the idea is not to rid anybody of their biases or microaggressions, but just to raise awareness of the reality of, the, of their existence and making sure that we know what we can do to make it better. Yeah, and I think, in the, and that's extremely valuable because it is a learning process if you articulate it to us. and. You know, um, we as a city and as, you know, 351 municipalities in the Commonwealth, we know that change is coming. Right. Um, Brockton is a, a, a welcoming, diverse community, always has been yeah. made up of hardworking people. But, you know, you need to have the tools in the toolbox, right? So you can create the platform for success. And again, um, when I became mayor, um, and I think I shared this with you, the first question that was brought to me is, well, it wasn't even a question, it was a statement, was, Mayor, you're not going to hoist the pride flag, are you? Yeah. And I said, you're damn right we're going to yeah. do that. And, you know, it's been a, a, a really a welcoming community of diversity. And, um, you know, my view is that your experiences uh, are helping us, right, because we're in the people business. Right. And, you know, we have to uh, embrace all people. Right. And so if someone's watching this right now and says, well, I don't really understand, you know, about diversity, equity, inclusion, LBTQIA+, like, what? Well, could you just maybe give like a, a snapshot of, and it's it's not really a fair question because yeah. it's not a snapshot. No, maybe that. just kind of like like some information that folks that are watching, you know, what what they should consider sure. in the year 2022. Yeah, what I always say is 
I, I identify as Latino, identify as a gay man, and I always say that my point of these trainings is never to get anyone to completely fully understand the experience or the lived-in experience of someone else, because it's just not going to happen, mm -hmm. right? I will never know what it's like to navigate this life in this world as a black man. That's not my reality. Mm -hmm. The idea and the purpose of these DEI, diversity, equity, inclusion trainings, um, is to raise awareness, to raise awareness that these realities exist. Um, these experiences exist whether we fully understand them or not that is beside the point is the fact that we are aware that this is someone else's truth this is someone else's reality so making sure that we're bringing light to that bringing some attention and awareness that what we can do as city workers for the city of residents of Brockton um, how we can be aware of the diversity within the culture within the residents and what that means when we're out in the streets doing our work when they're trying to access city services what we can do again to provide predictably positive experiences whether it's in the library mm -hmm. whether it's like city clinics or whether it's an encounter with fire department police department whatever that might be to making sure that all these folks that are working within the city of Brockton that have an awareness of what the reality of their residents are that's right and and you mentioned and that's right that's a hundred percent accurate and you know you mentioned um, microaggression unconscious bias mm -hmm. um, you know people hear these phrases but yeah. they may not truly understand what what does that mean could yeah. you just define that or give some examples sure, yeah so microaggressions we just did a training today on it <laughs> um, so microaggressions is kind of exactly what it sounds like, you know, micro, small, subtle, sometimes involuntary, sometimes intentional or unintentional, um, just acts that exhibit bias, exhibit mm -hmm. some kind of discrimination, some kind of um, othering to folks that might subscribe to marginalized groups, marginalized identities. Um, so understanding the impact on that. And when we speak on microaggressions, I always say over and over and over again, the importance of impact versus intention, right? Your intention might be good nature, they might be well intended, but it's always the impact of the receiving end mm -hmm. on how that might sound what that might feel like being the receiving end of whatever statement was made mm -hmm. so it's really important to keep that in mind um, in terms of unconscious bias it kind of plays into the idea of microaggressions it's just learning taking that awareness that extra second of awareness to really be cognizant of who the other human is at the other end of this conversation how are we encounter interacting with them what are we saying what words and what mindful words are we using because um, language matters and yes, it, it matters does. to people who have different experiences um, you know I always say that folks are going to gauge what they hear from someone else in a conversation against their own tolerance. So I will always gauge it against my tolerance and what I find tolerable. And as a gay man, that might differ from the next gay person you right. interact with. My tolerance might be might be different. So understanding that there's a very variety of tolerances, a variety of acceptability, and to be aware of that. Um, and the last thing I always want to throw in there is that I, I worry sometimes with these trainings that people will become fearful or almost scared to have an interaction with somebody who's unlike them um, for fear of saying the wrong thing. Mm. And it's never that I'm trying to get you worried about opening up or speaking or making a mistake. It's going to happen. We're humans. Um, it's just being aware of being aware and what to do in that moment if you do say the wrong thing and making sure that we apologize and address it and see what we could do better. That's right. And I think one of the, the first things you said to the department heads is we're all human beings, right? right. You know, we love, we cry, we bleed, we right. die, you know, I mean, right. we're human beings. And um, if someone hasn't, doesn't have the opportunity to sit in on a seminar or, or a presentation that you provide, sure. um, is there any resources that people watching could, could do that yeah. you would suggest to, to help educate and inform themselves? Oh, yeah. I mean, there's a ton, just Google things. So, you know, if you have access to that, but if you want something specific, um, there is a Barrel Institute is, a, is an organization that's really big on di diversifying the work experience. Mm -hmm. um, there's another organization called Living HR and like their whole mission is to provide a human-centered approach mm. on the work experience, making sure that we're not treating folks like cogs in a machine or robots, but really empowering and imploring people to bring their unique selves and their authentic selves to work and what we can do with that information, how to leverage it and make our workplaces more diverse and more functioning by being able to empower that. Um, so there's, they have a plethora of information. Honestly, like looking at LinkedIn, if you're looking on how this looks on a, in a workforce, um, there's a lot of folks that are really focused on making a human-centered approach at the workplace, um, especially in the reality of post-COVID, where yeah. now we're living and working within our homes. That's right. Things like that. And That's how right. That might look diverse as well. So I'm a ferocious reader, and yeah. you were kind enough to give suggested titles yeah, yeah. Uh, to the department heads and to the employees. What are some of the books that you would recommend if people want to read? Yeah. Um, one of my favorites, I just actually just talked about this at the microaggression uh, session, um, Ta-Nehisi Coates, um, Between the World and Me, is a phenomenal book if you are trying to even remotely understand the black male experience in this world. Um, just in the sense that it was a book that he wrote to a six-year-old son after, mm. I believe, Trayvon Martin, the incident with Trayvon Martin. 
And it was basically an apology to his son of the hardships that he will have to endure as a black man in this mm. world. Um, so just to, to read a book to gain that awareness and that perspective of what that reality looks for someone unlike yourself. So that's a really good one. Um, there's, oh, I'm drawing a blank right now. <laughs> that's okay. Oh, man. That's like, all right. <laughs> you can always Google. Google. There's, yeah, Google like, is like great. Like it's it's great. Right um, <laughs> you know, we, we, we will do is, is um, we, we'll, we'll come up with a list of the books yeah. that you presented to us. And what yeah. we'll be able to, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be able to provide that to you as well. Um, in terms of... I'm a parent of three kids, as I said, right? Two boys and a girl. Um, um, if, if I was um, not privileged to sit and listen and learn from you, yeah. um, how would you, in your humble opinion, um, suggest to parents, um, you know, co-parenting, single parent, guardians, sure. grandparents, whatever, whatever the fam familiar structure is, um, talk to our youth because the youth is the next generation yeah. and we need to listen and learn to them. Yeah. Um, how, and it's a tough situation at times, it right? It's, it's we have a, yeah. yeah. I just had this um, conversation yesterday. Um, something as trivial as the new Buzz Lightyear movie that just came out. There is a same sex couple and there's a same sex animated kiss on that, on that movie. And so many people are up in arms about this and how do we explain this to our children? It's a kid's movie. And I joked to a friend of mine, I was like, you know, I never remember there being an up in arms when we saw straight parents kissing in an animated movie in a Disney movie. Like, that was never a topic of discussion. You're right. And uh, so my friend has children, and she's like, you know, I expose my kids to this. I want them to understand that there are, there's a variety of ways to love. There's a variety of ways that things look differently mm -hmm. outside of what we have going on in our home. And she's like, and not to necessarily, you know, imply that they need to be subscribing to these things, but just to be aware, to understand if you do see two same-sex folks holding hands on the streets, like, you understand what that is, and that's just a different type of love. Right. Um, so being able just to come from that innocent point, like, there's no need to describe it any deeper than that or going into any kind of details, but just understand that families look different, love looks different, mm -hmm. and people who are just trying to do the right thing are just loving in a different way than what we, me and your father love or what parents look like. Um, and just operating and offering the idea that things can be different and still be fine. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's our world. Yeah. That's our world, right? The differences and, and love is love. Right. It doesn't, it doesn't right. matter the shape or the form. Right. Love is love, exactly. right? Your heart is your heart. Yeah. So, um, you know, are there any uh, last thoughts that you, you, you know, you'd know like to provide to the audience at this time, Richard? I mean, I just want to thank you for taking time. You didn't even need to come here today, no, but thank you for what it. you're doing. Yeah. I mean, um, Brockton is um, a special place, and we are under my watch. As long as I'm mayor, we yeah. are going to continue to educate and inform, um, have the tough conversations, the frank conversations, and create an environment of understanding mm -hmm. and kindness and love and diversity. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think you, you said it perfectly. I think it's really important to to embrace that um, because the real, reality is it's happening whether we embrace it or not, right? Like It's it's here to stay. It's, it's a thing. So it's easier for us to join in and work towards this reality than to either stay on the sidelines and watch it pass us by. Um, so I think it's really important. I appreciate you for prioritizing this and making this effort and this initiative happen within the city workers and to better the experience for the city, of res the city residents of Brockton. Um, um, yeah, I, I'm really grateful and appreciative to be able to be here and have these conversations with you and your team. I would love to have you back at a future date as well. Awesome, and yeah. um, like tonight, we're going to the Pride Picnic up at oh, DW uh, Fields Park. And um, we went last year. It's a wonderful endeavor. Oh, so, cool. you know, little things make a difference Absolutely. in life, right? Yeah. And so I just want to personally thank you. Um, you know, the best is yet to come. Yes. And uh, truly, truly appreciate your expertise and your willingness to uh, help us. Yeah, absolutely. I'm here whenever you need me. Happy to be a resource. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you, Richard. You. Thank you. So it really has been my honor and privilege to uh, to listen and learn from Richard Concio, who, again, is a consultant for the city of Brockton, and he is someone uh, that has dedicated his professional life uh, to helping others um, through his, his own personal uh, ideas and suggestions and expertise. So, again, um, it is an honor and privilege to serve as the mayor of the city of Brockton. It is our city of champions, and uh, we are better together. So we need to continue to... Um, uh, collaborate and have a willingness of understanding and uh, again you are um, always tuning in this is the 43rd episode a uh, 40 41st episode I just jumped to but again I, I will have Richard back at a later date and again it, I really want to thank you for tuning in and uh, we will uh, have another guest for the 42nd episode be well and stay safe thank you